there. Yeah, howdy, folks. We're here to tell you a story. This here's a country story. Well, actually, it's about some city kids. Who found themselves in the country on Christmas Eve. Yeah, they were two kids who, just because they were from the city, thought they knew everything. You know how them city slickers are. But that Christmas Eve, they heard something they'd never heard before. It was a story. So this really is a story in a story. And it all happened in the country. What are we doing here? Out in the middle of nowhere, miles away from civilization. I don't want to spend Christmas out in the sticks. Yeah, like we have a choice. But if Dad can't get the car fixed in time, we're stuck here for the holiday. <laughs> I hate this. There's nothing to do out here. No video games, no VCRs, not even a TV. There's not a mall or movie theater within a hundred miles of here. I'm bored stiff. These people are nice to let us stay here, I guess. But what is it with them? They call everybody cousin. Yeah, that's weird. The next time somebody comes up to me and says, Howdy, cousin. Howdy, cousin. I think I'll be sick. Sick? Cousin Daniel, are you ailing? Not exactly. I'll have Granny give you a dose of castor oil. It'll fix you up in a jiffy. No, Cormay, please. I'll be okay. Really. If you say so. Hey, Cousin Daniel, you want to go down to the creek and catch crawl dads? No. I mean, it sounds like a blast, but I think I'll pass. Hey, Cousin Chelsea. That's just Chelsea. Sorry, just Chelsea. You want to climb the persimmon tree? Uh, no thanks. I'm not dressed for climbing. I got some overalls you can wear. They're my Sunday pair, but I don't mind if you wear them. No, I, I think not. All righty. Say, Cousins, you want to? No! no. Alrighty. And we're not your cousin, either. Sorry. Look, Luther, Cormay, we don't want to be rude, but Chelsea and I feel, well, a little misplaced out here in the boonies. We'd like to get back to the city before Christmas. Yeah, what's so special about the city, anyhow? It's so cool. There's always something to do. Things are really happening, you know? This is how Christmas is in the city. Thank you. 
sounds exciting. I'd like to go there sometime. Say, if you were back in the city right now, what would you be doing? I don't know. I'd probably be hanging out with my friends at the arcade. Going to the mall? Don't y'all have a get-together with your family on Christmas Eve? Not really. Usually we go to a boring office party with my parents. That's where we were going when the car conked out. So you don't gather around and read the Christmas story? The Christmas story? Like, twas the night before Christmas? No, like the Bible story. And it came to pass in them days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. I never heard that Christmas story. <laughs> Me neither. It's from the Bible. Oh. Mm, whatever. Mm. Every Christmas Eve, we decorate a cedar tree with popcorn and cranberries, and Uncle Yule reads the Christmas story. Ooh, exciting. Uncle Yule? What kind of name is that? It's short for Yuletide. See, he was born on Christmas Day just like Jesus. Like Jesus? I don't know about that. And I still don't believe you have an uncle named Yuletide. In the flesh and at your service. Uncle Yule! Howdy, Uncle Yule. Her, we had company. Some cousins or something. We're not cousins. This here's Cousin Daniel and Cousin Chelsea. That's just Chelsea. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Just Chelsea. They're going to be spending Christmas with us. Oh, please, no. Nice to make your acquaintance, youngins. Your mom and pa here, too? Yes, our parents are here. Somewhere. Dad's been trying to get somebody to fix our car. Which may be impossible on Christmas Eve. And Mom's nursing a migraine. Uh, where about y'all from? We're from the city. Our car broke down and we're stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Now we're going to miss Christmas altogether. Well, we have Christmas out here too, you know. <laughs> of course, we do have to order air and sunshine from a catalog, but we do have Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Uncle Yule. Very funny. It may be Christmas time here, but it won't really be Christmas like it should be. Well, I don't know about that. Christmas is a country holiday, you know. What? Oh, sure. The first Christmas happened in a little old bitty country town. Please go Bethlehem. Group up here, youngins, and I'll tell you about it. All right, kids. I want to sing along, and you sing one right back. All right, now you think you can keep up? Okay, here we go. There was a gal. There was a gal. From Nazareth. From Nazareth. Was a little country town so long ago. Way back then, there was a guy. There was a guy. Her honey lamb. Her honey lamb. And he took his bride to be back home. It was a town. It was a town called Bethlehem. Called Bethlehem. Where his skin folks had once lived all right. Yahoo! And in that town. And in that town. Her child was born. Her child Mary's child was born right there one holy night. It all happened in the country, in a little country town. Country folks and farmers gathered all around. They gave the country howdy to a little country boy. Mama's little angel, have a pride and joy. All right now, kids. That's pretty good. Now, you're going to have to try to keep up with me on this next one. We're going to try to finish out this story, all right? There was a barn. There was a barn. Behind an inn. Behind an inn. Where God sent down a bushel of love. Yeah, we know. And in that barn. And in that barn. There was a boy. There was a boy. Who was born to be a king. Sure enough. All right, now take it. It all happened in the country.
That was quaint. Yeah, quaint. Well, we like it. So, now what? How about if you render us a tune? Render a tune? Oh, you mean sing a song? I don't know. Our music wouldn't translate out here. You wouldn't understand it. What kind of songs do you sing, cousin? Yeah. Are they like the songs we sing? Not at all. Very different. Different? Like how? Well, okay. Our Christmas songs sound cool. singing, Granny. These city youngins are showing us how they sing Christmas songs where they come from. Sounds like caterwauling to me. Caterwauling? Granny, it's their way of celebrating Christmas. And it ain't so bad. In fact, it's what do you call it? Cool? Well, land sakes, y'all. If you're cool, go in the house and put on a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's funny. She said cool, and she said put on a sweater. Don't you get it? It's funny, see? It's... Never mind. Say, you call that singing? Well, we call it music. Ain't got much tune to it. I suppose you can do better? I reckon. Let's sing the Ballad of the Shepherds, Granny. Yeah, oh, right, Granny. Let's sing it, yeah. All righty. Oh, no, Granny. That one always makes me cry. Well, fight it. A one and a two and a one and a two.
singing. The vittles is ready. Vittles? Come on, young'uns. Wash up and help me put it on the table. Yeah, there's hog jowls and turnip greens and cornbread. Granny's cornbread really twangs my buds. Come on, Cousin Daniel and Cousin Chelsea. You can sit by me. Uh, I don't need my buds twanged, thank you. Me neither. After we eat, we're going to decorate the cedar tree. And Uncle Yule's going to read the Christmas story from the Bible. No, thanks. Suit yourself. Come on, Cormay. Help! We've been adopted by the Clampets. What are we going to do, Daniel? I'm starving, and who knows when we'll get out of here. There's hog jowls and cornbread. Just wait and twang your buds. Oh, Daniel, I, I can't take it anymore. All the corn poem talking, cousins this and cousins that. I've got to get back to civilization. Me too. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> hey, youngins, Granny says the Beatles is getting cold. Hey, now, what you bawling for? Chelsea is, well, homesick. Oh. I guess everybody don't take to our country cooking and country ways. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but the boonies just aren't me. I understand. <laughs> Well, we didn't exactly fit in your plans. Kind of like that first Christmas, I reckon. What? What do you mean? You know, it, it was bad enough the King of Kings being born in that little one-horse town called Bethlehem. But for him to have to sleep his first night in a barn? Well, folks had a hard time accepting it. Is that really the way it was? Yep. But that was God's plan all along. Of course, it caught the rest of the world off their guard. Yeah, they didn't expect to meet the Savior in a barn. Really? Yep. It's surprising what you might find out here in the boonies. Hey, you young as like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Sure. Come on in the house. I think we can find something fit to eat.
It's hard to believe, I guess, that there are people all around us who don't know the true meaning of Christmas, that it's about celebrating Jesus' birthday. But there they was, city slickers, with all their city thinking, not knowing the real Christmas story. It was like a mystery novel or something. The more they heard, the more they wanted to hear. Yep. They didn't never try the hog jowls at Granny's table, but over a peanut butter sandwich and a glass of milk, them city kids got an earful of the gospel. You know, Uncle Yule, I think peanut butter and jelly tastes better in the country. You don't say. Yeah, and country milk's got to be better for you than the kind we get in the city. I expect it is. Uncle Yule, we're really sorry we kind of made fun of all the country stuff. Ah. Uh... Yeah, and we're sorry. I know this isn't the city, but it's not too bad. In fact, it's kind of quiet and peaceful. And everybody's real nice. Uncle Yule... Do you think you could tell us the Christmas story one more time? I reckon. Hey, Cousin Daniel and Cousin Chelsea, your pa just called. He got your car fixed. He said he'll be here directly to pick you up. Now you can get back to the city in time for Christmas. Yeah, great. Cool. What's the matter, Cousin Daniel? You don't act excited. Yeah, I thought y'all was so all fired, ready to get to the city. Cousin Chelsea, I mean, just Chelsea. It's okay, Cormay. You can call me cousin if you like. You mean it? Yes, I mean it. Chelsea, you think Dad would let us stay long enough to decorate the tree and hear the Christmas story again? I think so. I mean, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh
So the story goes. The parents did let them stay to decorate the tree and to hear the Christmas story again. In fact, their pa and ma seemed to enjoy their selves too. Their dad forgot about the office party he was missing. And their ma forgot about her headache. That night they all gathered round and Uncle Yule prayed, thanking God for bringing them all together. And then City Slickers heard the real Christmas story for the first time. You know, it's hard to believe that there are people out there who don't know the Christmas story. I reckon there's somebody here who ain't heard it, or somebody who needs to hear it again anyways. And so, let's tell it again. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into its own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds. Say they were country shepherds. <laughs> shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The story about the city kids in the country, well, it may or may not have really happened. But the other story, the story about the Savior being born, it did happen. He was a real baby with a really special purpose. He was God's son, and he came to make us all brothers and sisters in him, not distant cousins. And that's the story we come to tell you. Now go in and tell it to somebody else. Yeah, and tell them how it all happened in the country. <laughs>